Thank you so much, Greg, and thank you, Hope, for being here again. Right on. And thank you, Pinup, for the bar service. These would be both panelist drinks as well as audience drinks for good, brief questions. So, lock picking on the screen, much like uh, any hacking on the screen, right? It's, it's always super accurate. It blows you away and you immediately launch into uh, internet forums so you can register your extreme pleasure and satisfaction. Yeah, you just you stick see. any two things into a lock, right? And move them and it magically opens. Oh yeah, it just doesn't matter what lock, doesn't matter what two things, just any two one. things. Yeah. You don't even need two things sometimes. Oh. If you're really good at just, for the just one thing. So the thing about portraying lock picking in general, uh, lock picking is really fun. First of all, who, who enjoys lock picking, right? Like, yeah, good, that's why you're, and we do. Like, lock picking is a hoot, but it's actually not very visual. We have all kind of slides and animations and diagrams when we try to teach this stuff, because unless you're showing someone a clear see-through lock, it's really hard to convey what's going on inside the lock. So in fiction, a lot of times that, you know, to portray in still photos or in film, you kind of have to cheat a little bit. Like you can show the lock picker and maybe show their tools like outside the lock or have their tools like about to go into the lock. But unless you have some sort of fake cutaway view, you can't really show what's happening in the lock. You often can't even show someone picking really accurately because, you know, like this is a cool action looking sequence here, <laughs> but like it's a totally staged photo. Like, it's, it was for a magazine with shoot some, that we were in. With some, with some douche at the door. I know, right? And, like, I'm not standing in front of the lock. I'm, like, way off to the side to do... This was... It's... Whatever. We can tell this crowd. I love this line that you, you said. Uh, don't, I mean, I'll attribute it to you. Shooting lock picking is a lot like filming adult entertainment because the, the positions of a body are the most unrealistic thing so you can actually see where something's going in. Like, you have to be like, I'm picking the lock. Like, it, no one uses that angle. So picking often takes a back seat to just showing, showing like action happening, right? And there's kind of two ways that films do that. There's a good corollary with guns, right? You can have like a popcorn action movie like John Woo films with like clicky guns happening all the time. Or you can show... I love clicky, yeah, clicky, clicky guns, guns yes. <laughs> or like a realistic film with fallible characters under stress and in intense situations with their firearms. Like lock picking is the same way. And D we're gonna Dave has some opinions about the quality of films. Yes, I do. And the quality of guns in films too. Talk about guns later with me and I'll talk all day long. But for talking about lock picking, who wants to, who wants to lead us off with this great <laughs> Survive Style 5 Plus? The, uh, like, qu quite the clicky gun style of, like, nothing realistic at all about this, right? I think I remember this one. This is pretty funny. Uh, so I, I think what we're about to see, I, I don't actually I think I've ever seen the movie, but I've seen this clip. He's going to walk <laughs> up and, with a jackknife, um, lockpick set, which is this little set of lockpicks that folds up and there's a tension wrench is on it, it. Do you remember the brand? Can you tell? It looks like an is early, it? early Southward set. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It does look like handle. that. Uh, very similar to the one that I think is on sale downstairs in the vendor area. All right. <laughs> From like, yeah. Well, anyway, you'll, you'll see if this, is, if this is an example we'll of we'll good or bad. It. Let's see. Oh, that's the Southern set. That's not oh, the one yeah. we sell. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Okay, let's go. There's yeah. no need to turn the Kay. plug, by the way. Kay. Not at all. Just move the pick up and down, and it opens. You just sort of wiggle, and there's a click, and you're done. I, I really like his expression. Can we can we see him again here? Really quick. He's very intense. What? And it's really important that he look at what he's doing. <laughs> it, Where's the turning tool in they, they, So yeah, there's They did a great job really with that guy's that. character. It's yeah. just like what he's wearing and the hair and the face. Yep, very covert. Right, but of course you're not seeing anything. At, like this, this is the lowest end of, they just want to throw in an element of like, it's like the computer hacker that just, things swirl on the screen and the camera pans around their face looking a certain way and then, ooh, <laughs> they broke the password, great. So sometimes prop departments really love to get into it if they're going to show something close up, right? Like how many times have we seen, which is, do you, you just call it like the city rake or the sexiness of the city rake, right? I, the, the S rake, is that what you're talking about? The, 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 the long snake? rake, the long yeah. jag. No, no, the, no. Oh, I haven't, I don't, I don't think I've seen a lot of the, the city rake, but the S rake I, th I feel like all the time. 
all the time. Bo both yeah. of those really are pretty popular for that. Right. Anything that looks more intricate and jaggedy, they're going to be like, It looks complicated. This looks good. It looks, Therefore, co looks like they have really intense tools. Wrong so. direction. <laughs> <laughs> wrong tools. <laughs> yeah. The jagged part is supposed to go down away yeah, from, away the from the pins. <laughs> So they learned somewhere that there's two tools involved. They're just not supposed to be two lockpicks. So, so the, all the, you know, there's, there's a couple of, there's a number of like really common lockpicking fuck ups in mm -hmm. film. Uh, one of the most common one is like, oh, they're not using a turning tool. That's the most obvious one. They're using either one pick tool or two pick tools and no turning tool. That's, 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 the, that's the big one. Um, the, the other one is that you hear the bolt unlock without them actually turning the plug. Mm -hmm. And then even that's not quite so bad as the door that automatically unlocks and falls open without turning the plug. Yeah. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll see various forms of that throughout so these clips. I have to say one of my favorite scenes that we don't have is Beverly Hills Cop. Um, oh, yeah. He uses one. two lock picks and it's a, it's a mechanism to stop the actors or the characters while they have a conversation. So you see him take out two lock picks, you see him put them into the keyway, and then he actually spends time on it. You can't see what he's doing because he's blocking them, but the characters are having another discussion and dialogue, mm -hmm. and eventually you see him do something and it opens. And even though like, I had to stop that movie and like, rewind it five times and people were ready to strangle me with the remote, <laughs> um, just to make sure like those are two locks and I think uh, two picks and no turning tool and I think I know what brand they are. Um, it really, it did well for the movie. It did well for the movie. It got it along. It showed that it took some time and it took some skill on Eddie Murphy's character part. Um, if only they'd used a turning tool instead of an another lockpick. But this, this comes to a really interesting point, right? It's it's very rare for a dedicated enough props department to actually gimmick up a lock that you can get that very satisfying for us, like plug turn moment. And we even had one example of this, right? Who, who first found uh, this clip? Do you remember? Uh, I don't know. While you're playing it, I'll see if I, I don't can know. It's find a great it. goddamn film. Yeah, who's seen Inside Man? Like, it's a really, it's so, more, so we should see more hands. Good. It, it kind of was a sleeper at the theaters, but like, it was a really good fucking movie. It really was. And in this scene, you'll see Wrong picks, of course, because you need to look cool with the long rake picks in your lever lock, but they gimmicked up a cylinder so that they could actually show the turn. Thankfully, the rest of the film by this point was good enough that like, I was able to overlook this, which but it's like, should that's, tell you yeah. how much I enjoyed the rest of the film. But as, uh, as I think Preston <laughs> called it, the, the no cut, the no edit open moment is kind of really neat, and you don't see that often. And it's just because so many minutia details just are not in the consideration of people producing a lot of pictures. Like, I'm certain there's got to be a lot of, I don't know, photographers out there who know everything about cameras. And if someone's using a camera, like, oh, well, they didn't adjust their f-stop or they didn't actually, I don't know a lot about photography. Like, maybe Lady Merlin screams at the screen a lot when she sees movies. But to get down into the nitty-gritty of every subculture that you represent is hard. So when we see that, we were pretty impressed, even though the, the props they were using were wrong they did the hard work of building a, a door that they could actually swing and s open the cylinder. I, I see it with firearms a lot, especially after getting trained properly, and I'm like, why the hell is the guy walking around with his finger on the trigger? Mm -hmm. yep. Like, no, yeah. just, just take it off, that's it. Or, that's or just, what, do. why does the gun click? It just, yeah. the, the guns are clicking all the time. Yeah. Like, everything's yeah. right about to fall apart. It doesn't matter <laughs> which kind it is. <laughs> like, the guy's just holding a revolver, and, like, he moves his wrist, like, you know, half an inch, and it's like, click, 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 click. <laughs> well, what did he do? What's going on? This, 20 this shots thing. later, he's got to reload. Speaking of, there's a great parallel to that. I don't remember how long ago this app came out, but there was an application that you would run as an idle process, and it would basically turn your computer into a computer from TV and that, film. That was a uh, null, null beep. Null beep. That was null beep. That was made by the people like, who, who brought you one amp. Who which like really whips the llama's Opened ass. an application or minimized a window or like hit enter. It would be like bleep, boop, boop. Like it, your computer would just beep all the time. It would hum and like as the processor Wait, time went up, it would hum louder. <laughs> I, so I don't need to get a pet. I can just put that on my computer and it'll be like having a pet. Yeah. Oh yeah. More or less. Yeah. Null beep. I'm sure it still runs in like a DOS box or something. Uh, speaking of other old stuff, who watched, who watched MacGyver? Come on, there we go. Another example. Uh, Who's got their multi-tool yeah. with them? Yes, huh? right? <laughs> Another example of you don't see exactly the right tools, in this case, not a turning tool, but again, the plug moved, so we kind of called this one not bad. You have this music. 
I like that it's labeled lock. Yeah. <laughs> be, be sure to label your locks so that people know that they are, in fact, locks. You may have thought it was a button. Yeah. Right. You never know. That would be funny if you had a wafer lock that was just a button and it wasn't actually a lock. <laughs> it's, it's like those cabinet locks. I can't locks. pick this lock. Have you tried pressing it? The filing cabinets. Oh, pop yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to push them in and turn. Somebody, if you, who follows the Twitter account Batman Labels? Has anyone heard of this? There's a couple. <laughs> I feel lines. like I this should. More this people should. All screen grabs right from now. the old Adam West Batman show that are just the. If you ever saw, they're just like criminal proceeds. They're like on a box, just labeled criminal proceeds. <laughs> it's like Joker's poison gas in like a giant tank. <laughs> like, it's nothing but those screen grabs. Bat oh, fingerprint shit. detector. Fingerprint, yeah. Bat detector, yeah. Batman. Bat crime print. computer. So, who wants to talk about this one? This was a shock to see the accuracy on this video game, right? Oh, is this the one, anyone... the one that almost, I, I swear, I'm like, I, did he consult on this? <laughs> well, a lot of tool people think that some amateur lock picker, or at least a very avid devotee of locks and lock picking, was like in contact with the development <coughs> team of this Watchmen game. Uh, if you've never seen footage from this, like this is an this element is an of the gameplay. 3D cutaway. Somebody spent a lot of time on this, and you even... It kind of looks like there's wear on the pins. I don't and know. Some of those uh, pins are way too short. Like that. Like that key pin. You uh, yeah, that, Come on. that's a bit of a problem. But uh, I'm sure we're we nerdy hackers. We're going to find some reason to not like it. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And like, come I'm on. sure we can that find a locksmith turn, who's that. That guy's turning tool was like a looped around paper clip. I don't know how much you can do that. I've done that with a bobby pin. Yeah. Like, I've done that with right. a paperclip. It's not perfect, but come on, like it's it's better than a lot of. Wasn't there like lock picking in Fallout or something? Does anybody know? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. was it, that's was it the one where they spin the bobby pin yep. and use the yep. screwdriver, and I'm like, what kind of lock are you picking, buddy? Because <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna work. Well, speaking of tools made of bits of wire and improvised tools, uh, this was a film from back in the '80s, a really funny, a good movie. If Duck you like. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this shows an actual improv snapper gun which was very pop before you could just order snap guns from catalogs a lot of locksmiths and even sometimes criminals and other people in the kind of shady underworld would make their own snap guns using basically bicycle spokes right mm -hmm. and, and this, you still yeah, can you yeah. can you can make this tool right now and it will kind of sort of work because we still have locks in the US that it kind of sort of works on it'll work about as well as it ever did <laughs> nice use of a turning tool Nice use of his mouth to hold his extra tools. Like I said, duck. Shit. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, there's a later scene where uh, Preston also says, is, he uses the same tool later to get into a building, and he says it's a great example of the pick the lock, then look both ways before you like enter the room kind of trope. You but know, don't, again, like, what's don't it? look out before you do it. Right. Do something that makes it obvious that you're breaking in, then make sure the coast is clear. But it is, it's really, it makes us kind of smile, and maybe you see this in elements of like hacker shows when somebody has done enough research to get an obscure, even if it's an odd little thing, like that's not a fancy tool, right? But the fact that they got it right, the fact that it was legit, makes it that much better. And at some point, we're even going to show you a clip from Mr. Robot, but how often do people praise Mr. Robot? Because... Even the small stuff, the throwaway details on the show, they're like Easter eggs for all of us because somebody cared enough to... The, again, you don't have to cost a lot of time and energy in the props department, but you can amp up the reward really big for the audience when you want to. In fact, it'll probably cost you less, less in the props department because real tools don't blink quite as much as <laughs> most Hollywood tools. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Anybody, my picks uh, need fewer batteries? Yeah. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. Anybody a fan of the, the great Nathan Fillion? Yeah. All right. Probably, on, probably for shows on. that are way yeah. better than this show. Anybody watch Firefly? Firefly. Right? Firefly. There we go. Yeah. All right. Anybody watch that show Drive or something when it was on for three episodes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they freaking canceled it mid-season. Yeah. Any of my theater freaky freakies in the room who like the Much Ado About Nothing that Joss Whedon did? Yeah. Yes, there we are. All right. How about Dr. Horrible awesome. sing-along blog? There we go. Yeah. All right. Well, one of his lesser in, you know, efforts was Castle. <laughs> And this is, again, like you have this sort of genre uh, of this idea in a lot of TV and film of the dumb character who needs everything explained to him all the time, which takes the place of the audience, hence like Buck Rogers. 
archaic Stone Age man in the 23rd century, but you know, you get everything fed to you. Well, that show is notable for this. Castle is this detective show where somebody on, a, on screen is always explaining everything for no reason. And even in this scene with Picking, his daughter feeds it to the audience because, you know. One mother pen is the torsion wrench, the other is the lock pick. You just need to be careful not to apply too much pressure. Did you just break the hairpin? Because that's the last one. No, I got it. Oh my God. It's all right, <laughs> well, you know. Always carry a spare in your wallet. Yeah, always carry spare hairpins in your hair. Who, who carries like, first of all, who carries lockpicks on them in general all the time? Really, that's not a lot of hands. Can we count wow. how many sets everybody carries? Yeah, who carries more than one set though? Because like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've got but the main set. But I want to see more hands in the audience. <laughs> exactly, you gotta get some, get some of the new tools or make your own. Chop, take regular tools, chop them down. We'll, we'll talk to y'all about that later. But the idea, again, they showed actually using a turning tool and a, a improvised pick. They showed the turning of the plug. So we gave that one some pretty good props, right? That was, that was pretty that's nice. A, that's a solid scene for that. Yeah. The one that a lot of people remember growing up with, though, like the classic movie that a lot of people go to for like showing lock picking and showing intensity of it and the, the realism. Linda Hamilton, as an actress, she was remarkable in this role. Uh, her acting skills, where she really threw herself in, she did a lot of training, she did firearms training, she wanted to do all the gun handling, she really wanted to do everything on set. And a lot of people, I didn't even know this till you guys told me in the research for this, that she wanted to do all the lock picking legit. Like, yep. they, Cameron was gonna give her just time to get it right, and just keep trying and keep trying. And so when you see her struggling on set, she's really, this like, is her this is her legit doing trying to get it. out of restraints and trying to pick a door with, you know, things she had. Yeah, I think it was, was that Night Owl or Preston that gave, that had that piece of uh, information, but they do, yeah, this, at the end, we this was, cuts. This was, Linda Hamilton actually did all of this. She insisted that they put her in real restraints and that she attempt to get out of them using skills that she picked up. And uh, this next bit, I think, yes, this bit right here, uh, was originally supposed to be a throwaway take that was going to cost them like nothing. And she insisted that they give her the chance to actually do it on screen. Uh, I believe she did actually manage to get it open, but they stopped, <laughs> they stopped the take before she got the bolt. Yeah. What I thought was really the, the good, way it they was, cut it, still, it looks great. It's easy to miss, but she actually takes the paper clip and bends the tip of it in the mm -hmm. edge of the buckle. Like, she's not just unbending it and sticking it in there. She, she's actually fashion, so there it is. So she yep. grips the paper clip in the end there to bend the tip and then uses it, which is exactly what you would have to do if you wanted to pick open. I have, in fact, done this myself. Right. Really? All the time in, like, a facility of state care? <laughs> Seriously, no. If you, if you ever have a, a pair of Smith & Wesson handcuffs, there's that nice little groove. Or peerless. Mm -hmm. Peerless, too. Oh, yeah, the groove but on the But that nice little the groove on the, on the pole... Uh, is a great place to make an improvised tool. Mm -hmm. Who here has ever picked their way out of handcuffs or escaped restraints? Yeah. Okay, they, they, good. That's good hands here. Somehow we we want some more of those hands. Uh, some of you in the back that aren't raising your hands, come downstairs later. We'll help you out with that. <laughs> right. So, all right, who watches Mr. Robot? Right? Yeah. There we go. Now, what are some of the things that we love to mention about this scene? Oh, there's a lot of... Right. Is this the second season? I this is, no, yeah, this is so first. here, let's, do, let's go ahead and show it, right? See, you looked that round before, not after. Yeah. Make sure the coast is clear, gets his tools out, opens the door. Crossing the road. Now, you couldn't see everything because they were trying to keep the pace up, right? But something that Preston mentioned in an email to me, and we have to, th we'll thank him again, but Preston was really instrumental along with the two Hugely. fellas on the end there of, of putting all this together. Um, Props goes to Skylar as well for starting oh yeah. the spreadsheet that we then took to get a lot of these clips. <laughs> yeah, there's Skylar a pretty Town, sizable sheet now of just any lockpicking featured in, in media that people just comment on in the tool community. It's funny. But Preston pointed out what happens when he gets to the other side of the door. Does anyone remember the scene? Anyone remember? No? Come on. He's, he's not where he wanted to be. He's in the wrong stairwell, which is very realistic because like, even if you pick a door open, on how many jobs have we like picked stuff open and All been like, time. well, shit, this doesn't do us any good. <laughs> like, <laughs> glad I spent four minutes on that. In a lower security area. I mean, we've yeah. let ourselves out. Yeah, we've let ourselves out of the building. Awesome. That helps. Y usually, it's, 
it's because you're the one who's like, here, let's go this way. I'm like, wait, but you're like, no, no. No, 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 this is good. This, this is, is good. Right. Follow me. Yeah, I, I cowboy it a lot pretty much on all the pen test jobs, but that's, that's my jam. I think uh, this is the second yeah. time you blame Dee for something. And it's it, I'm a very, you, I'm very blameable. It's if something goes wrong there in the job, it's, for there are reasons. Yeah, <laughs> that one company was so mad at that. Never mind. We won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, but now something that Bobak turned me on to, and then a lot of people have now seen this. Uh, I, where did you originally encounter Saruroku? It wasn't the manga, right? Like you, no, you had heard no. of the the no, films. No, I, I the, heard the of, show. I heard of this. It's a. Uh, the the the, ori the original story is actually a, a, a manga, a graphic novel uh, about this uh, young locksmith that is the protagonist in the series, which was uh, really fascinating. He, he's even got like an HPC style hook in the uh, in the cover there, and you know, obviously, like any any other uh, you know Japanese uh, uh, graphic novel storyline, there's a bunch of hijinks and things that happen, this and that. But it was so popular that they actually made a live action series. Uh, and then uh, film based off of based off of the manga. So uh, this is from this would be oh nine right. It, this, so this is the first opening clip of the first episode right. basically, where he's a locksmith. Like that's his job. But then, as Bobak points out, like crazy mayhem ensues with him and his friends. Right. And this is easily one of the most fascinatingly fun. Not just because they show real tools and it's realistic one, action. It's one of the most accurate. It's depictions of lock picking in, in the show. And it shows really fucking good filmmaking. Like innovative, way. you know how we talked about it's hard to show the lock? Like what are you gonna see, the inside of the lock? They really think about, their, whoever their DP was, like really was like, hey, let's set up the camera this way. What if we did this? Like, check this, check this out. Double disc we tried to get the subtitles, apparently they didn't transfer over. あなたのような美しくて可愛い女性ならまた何度もお連れてまた何度も呼んでほしいですよ。もうお世辞がお上手ね。いや、お世辞なんかじゃないですよ。難しいですか？いや、actually, let's see here. Do I have subtitles? Nope. So the idea of showing, like through the keyway, is kind of neat. You'll see in this next scene. Uh, later on in the show, someone, a friend of his is like compromised by, he gets a text, she thinks she's got something slipped in her drink in a bar, and he's like, oh my gosh, you know, what happened there? He leaves what he's doing, he wants to go find like, who is this guy that might be taking advantage of my friend? And of course, so he's a locksmith, he's gonna try to save the day, but the, the whole show is like, he never quite saves the day in the heroic way, he's always kind of, he never, he never gets the recognition. He's a little inept. He's a little inept, yeah. but he does open the locks, and again, the way they show it, is not just advancing the action, but really showing you mechanisms and, and fun ah! details. Ah! You know, they got the right music. <laughs> <laughs> Even the keyway turning. Like... He didn't forget his tools. So the bedroom where she's he thinks she's being like taken advantage of. There's there's a number of plot points throughout the uh, various storylines that they write that involve him going through like progressively harder and harder and harder locks. And his girl, his like the girl he knows, his best friend. She's like the super badass though. So she just you know punches the guy in the face repeatedly and tells him like <laughs> tells him off. But I, we love that's. I think that was wonderful. The idea of showing, like you saw the keyway actually turn with that mask they had put over the camera, and it's really fun. If you want to include fun details, it's not hard to really show your audience and to show your viewers really innovative details and really cool, like tiny little, just tiny little points that make people be like, oh shit! Like, I love that the props department did that. I love that the authors of this piece didn't just want to make him a locksmith for the point of showing his like, oh, it's like any hacker, right? The hacker's like kind of weird, but competent. But like, it's a very two-dimensional character in most hacker like supporting roles. This is a very fleshed out person and the tech details they wanted to show were really, really neat. Anybody else on, on have you guys watched any of the series besides Bobak? I've, I've not had a chance to yet. I unfortunately have not. Who here would watch the series? 
Well, I think you've got it's, them all. We can put them on a flash it's, drive it's, or something. It's, it's not a. You it's can trust a the flash drive. We'll hand you right now from stage. It's, it's, it's not a super great uh, storyline, but it's 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 the kind of thing you can put on the background and get actual work done. <laughs> yeah. So those were just those were certain examples. Um, again, we were made aware because we you know. You can only rant about so much stuff that, oh, this was wrong in the film. If only they had called up. Because, you know, Tool, we're always like, you could contact us with any lockpicking questions. We'd love to provide uh, knowledge and wisdom. Remember, as filmmakers have tried to, like, tell us, like, stuff like this is decided long before any suggestions that we might have could be useful. Uh, it's nice if the props department could try to gimmick something up. But, like, if it's not on the shot list, like, there's no way that somebody in the props department can make that into, a, you know, into production. So we understand there's challenges in making things realistic in film. Uh, it's really like that's happening at the script level. Unless somebody who's the filmmaker wants this to be in, these kind of details will never show up. But just follow, you know, follow the rule of write what you know. If, if you do any film work, if you do any kind of artistic you know, production pieces, write about what you know. And if you're interested enough in lockpicking or hacking or anything else, any subculture, there's always fanatical people out there that will answer your emails and ask questions about what you don't know. You may be able to actually include some really cool details. There, am I missing anything of those key points? What do you think? Is there anything else I you mean, would give advice to? Because how many people like, know the artist community and have ever been involved in film production of any kind? Like, this is New York. A lot of you may have been an extra in somebody's B-movie that never went anywhere, right? Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's really, just like everything else, it's a, it's a time and, and resources trade-off. So, if that is central to the plot, then they may spend more time on it. If not, they're going to do what they know, and it's really not worth the time in some cases to send somebody to go fi figure out who to write a letter to. So if you know somebody in that area, then maybe you just like introduce them to it. This is what a lockpick is. This is you know how it's done for the basic stuff. And then maybe they'll think about that for their next script. Yeah. So as with most of our talks about locks and lock material, the main thing, like, who was here yesterday when we did the road show and people were coming up? Right, who had fun with that? So we want to, this is not nearly an exhaustive list. We want to show a clip on uh, Bobbick's machine and then anybody who has really good thoughts about lock picking they have seen on film or screen or anything, we want to hear from you at the microphone. We want to hear... And probably other people will recognize what you're talking about. Ask us about other bits of lock picking you've seen. Ask us about tools you may have seen in any f in any films that you don't know if they were real or not. So we want to know what you've seen and what you want to know more about. But you have another solder lock coming up. Uh, yeah, yes. and, and some stuff from video games. So oh, while sweet. you're setting that up, one of Preston's favorite scenes actually is um, Robert Downey Jr. in the movie U.S. Marshals, where he's in the handcuffs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he grabs the um, sunglasses off the guy who plays Cypher from The Matrix, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's and he right. Just, like, <laughs> he just fucking like, breaks him, and then all of a sudden turns around and does something and shoves the... Um, he shoves the he handcuffs. shoves the stems of the sunglasses into the handcuffs to shim them and open them, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those scenes where it's like, that could work if it was thin enough, and it, it was really cool the way just they choreographed that. It does work. It's just very particular classes. I've right. Sean, Sean, Dark Sim has done it before. Ray, you've done it before? Yeah. 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 Actually, Oops. Oh. Is Look your microphone? You. There you go. Yeah, actually, um, a company in Germany for a film of like Mistbuster style mm -hmm. asked me to verify that very scene for them. Oh, really? Yeah, and we did it with uh, high Thompson handcuffs and actual sunglasses, and oh, it wow. perfectly worked. And we did exactly what you mentioned, bending the tool in the handcuff. There oh, okay, go. so you yeah, actually yeah. manipulated the, the paw yeah, instead of shimming. Yeah, because in the film also there's a scene where the, the main actor frees himself, yeah. mm -hmm. and he picks with a lock. Oh, yes, okay. yes. both Wesley Snipes and so that, Robert yeah, Downey Jr. Snipes use that trick. So it's you, actually a you bit of a plot. Take the glasses, form. bend them in the lock of the handcuffs, and pick it. It really works. That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. It's, it also shows up in the TV show Burn Notice. Um, yes, oh, that's yes, right. Plausibly, he then tries to use the another piece of the sunglasses to pick a pin tumbler lock, but. Um, oh yeah, yeah. You're just a guy with some busted sunglasses. No one will suspect anything. Except I'm you're standing Michael in a place Weston. you shouldn't be, shoving shit in locks. <laughs> like, I'm Michael so Weston. We're gonna we're gonna just flip through a couple of various clips here. The first one is from a video game that I never really played um, a whole lot of, 
Uh, but Skyrim? Anyone play Skyrim? I so, there we go. Oh, damn it. So this guy's narrating. It's just a YouTube clip that I grabbed, but... Um, yeah, you can listen to this guy try to play and pick this lock. You move your lock pick, and that's not what we're looking for. And so, so you're just gonna it's want almost to start like reverse picking because he's moving, moving what looks like a turning pick. tool, possibly. And I'll be quiet. And, and his, well, more importantly, uh, he's doing this house, to a lever lock. His yeah, jailhouse not... shiv is uh, acting as the turning tool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, didn't find anything the first time. Let's try again. So apparently, in this game, the the way it works is you have an analog stick of some kind, and you have to like move the pick slowly into a certain area and when you feel like it vibrating then you like hold it there and if you didn't do it too fast and the pick doesn't break or something then the lock opens it's, so it's not entirely dissimilar from uh fallout i believe right there did you guys hear that no, no. Then, we heard heavy breathing because it's a youtube no one heard it play it again uh so then there is uh we'll we'll flip to the opening scene that you folks saw earlier but without subtitles, so this will have. Oh, subtitles. so you can see what actually happens, yeah. Uh, they can't read it, it's way too low. Nope, hold on, we can, talk. we can fix this. You're just gonna bring your screen up? There you go. There we go. Can everyone see the subtitles? There you go. We'll move it up a little bit, hold on. How's that? Is that, is that better? Yep. Are you ready? まあ、<笑><笑> So, so the funny part here is that she hired him to come over and, you know, she, she's so silly, she locked her keys out, you know, she needs to get in, oh, you know, she's so thankful. Yes, <laughs> よかったらすね。ご一緒にお茶にでも。なんて言わないでくださいね。あなたに誘われたらついついに行っちゃう。行っちゃうってそんな。え、何鍵変えてんだよ。ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、
busting scene, which in fact Mythbusters, I think, tried to replicate and showed you could. The idea of filling a safe with liquid, usually water they use in the movie, and then ex putting off an explosive charge to shockwave the doors off. With ostensibly, like, if you had an air-filled safe and you just blew the, the, like, you would destroy everything in the safe. But liquid, you know, would shockwave out and you wouldn't actually destroy all the contents. So I, I think the plot point there was they were trying to recover some paper or something. Yeah. So. No, it was, a, it was a, I think it was, I thought it was a it gold object. It was a staff, object. right? It was, it was a staff that was hidden yeah. in a piano light. But speaking of, of safe flopping, um, Bernie, or Bernie, Bernie S. pointed me to uh, an old James Caan movie, Thief. And we actually have, and if we get a little more time, we'll show a couple of clips from Thief, which was meticulously researched. Uh, crazy safe opening, destructive safe opening, so it's not quite in our wheelhouse, but very accurate. And if you want to, if we have a little bit of time later, we'll show you some of those clips we're, that we're I We're going to switch out. to one clip, and then we're going to switch to a question yeah. again. Back How about you show that okay. clip, and then After? I'll in, in, instead of me talking. Would you like to sit? Okay. Just show the clip. Oh, show the clip? Show the clip? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to flip back. There we go. Thank you very much, sir. And so th this is, uh, again, another series I didn't really watch a lot of. Uh, this is an episode of uh, Bleach. Anyone here ever watch Bleach? I don't know. I don't know if there's any anime people in here or not. But what I particularly enjoyed about it is how they represented the process of deciding to take a lock. That's what happened when I took out my lockpicks. Oh, wait. That's not easy. There's no other way to do it. I don't want to see the door on the other side. If you do that, you're going to be a bad thing. You're going to be a bad thing. So that's it. I just really enjoyed like, how... Uh, I can't... Uh... Can't easily rewind it to the to the frame that I wanted, but just the whole process of this whirlwind and you know, wow, I have this pick and I'm gonna bend it and then something not as exciting is gonna happen. I mean I thought that's what happened when you took out your lockpicks. Yep. Just Bobak. <laughs> yeah, it's only him. Please, yes, sir, sir, go ahead. So sir. Uh, <clears throat> whatever. So uh, what what one uh, style of, of lock picking that is my particular pet peeve in movies is not actually about mechanical locks is people punching and trying to, to pick, uh, <laughs> you know, combination locks. The, the, the archetypal one being uh, Matthew Broderick trying to break out of his jail cell in the of his, where he's being detained in the base by recording the DTMF tones that are coming right. out of the, of the touchpad, which is just, just things don't work like that. A uh, lot more easier if your uh, locking system is controlled by a telephone. That would right. actually yeah. potentially work. Yeah. So there are systems that, that work that way. Um, like apartment buildings. Yeah, there are apartment buildings that, that work kind of similarly to that. And uh, although it's not exactly that, it does remind me of uh, several hotel safes that I've seen where when you lock it, each button that you press makes a different tone. So conceivably, if you're outside of someone's room when they lock their safe, you could listen in to what keys they're pressing. Um, and you know, just decode the the pin that way. So, as as silly as it sounds, the idea that a security device that uses a pin having different tones for each number is, is not unheard of. We've seen it really? a multitude of different times. Absolutely, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not entirely ludicrous. Yeah, I've, I've, just I mean, a little I'm, bit. I'm familiar with the, the in Parisian buildings, especially they have the 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 um, you know the three by four touchpad, but it does not make the TMF tones. It's just Right, just right. Beep, yeah. beep, beep. Anyway, well, good to know. Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Have you. Have a whiskey. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, yeah. I wonder if anyone staying here has found the secret the tubular no. lock that no, no. is the override lock on the in-room no, safes. Yeah, I don't want to go in there. It's there. You just, it's oh. hidden. Yes, it's usually under a cap. It is, it is under a cap on these safes. Don't fuck with your in-room safe. <laughs> No matter how ridiculously easy the tubular lock is to pick. It's also a factor combination. I'm sure. Well, just, just, just remember the first rule. Don't mm -hmm. uh, pick locks you don't own. Right. No, we, Bobak and I own a lot of models of in-room safe now. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're not fun to travel with, let me tell you. Especially if you accidentally no, stay you, in somewhere yeah, that uses the You try the to same check model. out of your hotel with a bunch of them on a bell cart. You get some <laughs> strange looks. <laughs> Yes, sir. We got a, another I, question. I actually have two questions, if that's okay. One of them is pretty Please. short. So, yeah. um, 
Is being a locksmith kind of like being a wizard where your skills are directly proportional to the amount of facial hair you have? (laughs) Come on up, take one. And uh, if you're here at 11 in the same room, you can ask that question again. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, very, very bearded panel. Who's coming to the TSA Keys talk at 11 p.m.? Oh, you Come should on, all I want to hear some that. more. <laughs> Try so, that again. Who's coming to TSA Keys at 11? Yeah. There we go. That's more like it. So I've actually used my beard to hold my lock picks when I need them. Oh, yeah. I've got a couple too many. They can, I can just stick a couple in there when I need them, you know, swap them out. <laughs> So, real question. Back to Prison Break. I, I like the first couple seasons of the show, and the thing that I remember, um, they had to make a copy of a key, and so they caused a distraction on one of the guards, and somebody made an impression of this key in a bar of soap, mm-hmm. and then they melted the plastic handle of a comb into the impression, mm-hmm. and they were able to open like a four or five pin lock with that. Is that realistic? Is that something that can actually be done, or is that just fiction made for TV? We, well, I think that we might call for, that for impressioning a lot? feasible but not super plausible. I would um, probably pick different materials because yeah. I think that soap is going to melt at much lower temperature than the plastic. I don't know. If you're dripping plastic in, like, yeah. that, you know what? This is the kind of thing I now want to like, try down in the village. <laughs> All right. Somebody bring a bar of soap. Somebody bring fire. And somebody bring some plastic. Yeah. So uh, the idea you know, so of go well. you know, uh, cheap, a cast cheap and mold attacks are real. Those are, there are absolutely kits that you can do that with with various kinds of soft mediums and metals, usually metals with a very low melting point, like a woods metal or a, you know, some sort of alloy that has... Uh, I don't like, like that. Yeah, you don't want to use lead. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, but th- yeah, this, like, this actually was uh, something I was just asking Dave if we had any stills or clips of this. Uh, the old Donald Sutherland Great Train Robbery oh, film yeah. where they do, film. they do this uh, casting attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic film, and they really go into detail with the whole process of it. And uh, that was that was so old. You're seeing chub locks, and one of the f- yes. you know back in the day, and this was, which was a based off of a real story, the real incident, right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, they only later got caught because Robert Agar, like they were supposed to pay off his mistress, right. and then he was in prison for another crime, and they stopped giving his mistress any money, so he ratted them out. But yeah, the idea back then, you didn't have like, you know, bismuth alloy metals and things, so you would just make a a wax cast of a key. And then a man like him, a safe cracker, a screwsman, as you would be known, would be able to use that to basically visually guide themselves to, to carving the key, to making a key. And uh, what, a, what a magnificent uh, couple of scenes in that, in that movie showing conventional picking, sort of that impressioning key attack. It was a very, very entertaining picture if you like early Sean Connery work. Well, something to consider as well is that the further back you go, um, the tolerances weren't quite as tight either. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, the idea that you could use more uh, cruder methods to achieve uh, such result is more more believable as well. But yeah, now I would totally want to melt a toothbrush. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. Another question. Yeah, uh, grab, a, grab a drink and questions, yes. Yeah, hi there. So uh, first of all, thank you guys for showing up for this conference because uh, this is my first hope and yesterday I learned how to pick a lock, so that was pretty cool. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. Right on, man. All right. Open. <laughs> and... Uh, I was, uh, first question, I have two, is, uh, have you guys ever seen a movie where there, or a TV show or anything like that, where there's a scene where somebody attempts to pick a lock and fails? Uh, Ah. yes, there, there's a couple of different ways I've seen that. One of my favorite is actually one that I've seen, is one trope that I've actually seen more and more often, uh, the new Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes films, as well as a Canadian, uh, detective series called Murdoch Mysteries. Uh, if, if you have, uh, you may also have seen it under the name The Artful Detective, uh, apparently in the U.S. Uh, and there the failure is the, the main character, who is usually a very skilled, brilliant person, pulls out a whole set of complex tools, and they're going to pick this lock, and they just get started on it, and their partner gets impatient and just kicks the door in. Uh, there have been a few others where... And unfortunately, I cannot recall off the, off the top of my head which particular series or films I've seen it in, but where they break their tool off or something interrupts them. So there, there is actually a clip that is relevant. Oh, slightly. There we go. Um, and I run. So we can switch shot. back oh, to the yes, video yes. feed. For, yep. From the same show. It, it's not that I really like the show a whole lot. It's, it's okay enough. It's that 
when the entire show is about a locksmith protagonist, you get a lot of clips out of it. So. Oh, that's a good freeze frame right there. Oh, uh, yeah. His 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 sidekick is a uh, interesting. Uh, Interesting fellow here. So the, I don't even remember the details of, of the backstory of this particular um, episode, but uh, there is some organized crime syndicate or gang or bad guys are trying to break into the house. There's something in some secret safe that uh, Saru, the, the main guy, is trying to get into, and uh, he has some difficulties. Saru, <laughs> <laughs> um, can we sell pics like that? <laughs> Those will definitely stay in my beard. Dave Peterson Tools makes this. Oh, that might be a John Fall. I don't see any gator on it. It can't be Peterson. Hopefully this is the clip I'm thinking of. No, the, the guy yeah, she's distracting the mob boss guy or gang oh, okay. person. Sorry, I'm actually really curious who, who did the soundtrack to this now. I, I don't know. It's starting to sound like Archer. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing a bit of Archer, a bit of Cowboy Bebop, and uh, I think earlier we had some bits from uh, Hackers. What's the hot key to speed up VLC? I don't know. But speaking uh, of... Anyway, he doesn't get into the second safe. Um, he has to, later on, he has to like make a new special kind of pick, uh, and then he comes back and then gets in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it does happen, but it depends on the story that the filmmakers or producers are trying to show or tell. All right, cool, thanks. And the, yeah. uh, the other question I had was, um, Related to like digital locks, things like pin pads and you know hotel room key things. You guys ever play around with any of those? Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, not not as tool members, <laughs> but a couple of us might run a pen testing firm that does things. Uh, that yeah, are interesting. I mean, those are those are oftentimes um, not not as difficult as, as you would hope it would be. Um, and to anyone who is interested in that, um, the best thing I can recommend, uh, just like with anything else, um, any other type of hacking that you want to learn or play with is just decide that's what you want to do and get a couple samples of whatever the thing is that you're interested in and you can be creative about how you do that. So if there's a brand of safe that you like, then you can start looking at you know, used ads or this or that, or you can call the manufacturer and see if they're, you know, if you can, you said buy, buy four yesterday, right? What's that? You yeah, said buy, buy four. four yesterday of buy you four, want to work yeah, buy, buy four of everything. So there's, I, there's ways to buy, you know, hospitality safes and all sorts of other stuff. And just take it apart and look for interesting things. I mean, as, as vague as that is, that's really all it takes. Because you'll just start looking at different designs and you'll go, well, no, it wouldn't be that simple, would it? Mm -hmm. I like when he found the master override code of a certain model hospitality safe. Oh yeah, we, we were we were at a conference yeah. at a very large uh, property uh, down in Florida, um, an extremely large property down in Florida. Um, Who owns and, that much and, uh, property in Florida? <laughs> and it it just happened to be a very simple design where the uh, microcontroller um, didn't store the the safe master code. Um, on chip, it stored it in like a little EEPROM chip. So you just hook up, you know, logic analyzer and put in some incorrect opening attempts and look for the, you know, the times that it reads the code from the double EEPROM. And we found a master code. It was comparing the pin number to not only the code that I set, but also some other code that we had not set. Um, and we found a six-digit master code that opened the safes for the entire property. Um, 
And what was even more interesting is, is I, I called the manufacturer afterwards and said, hey, you know, I bought, I just yeah. bought one of these safes. Yeah, I'm a hotel owner, I bought yeah, a few of these. We have the master code, we want to change it. How do we change the master code? They're like, oh, there, there's, no, there's no master code in those safes. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, that's weird because there's this code that they gave us. Yeah, so the slip of paper. That it works all the time, all but the time. we can't, can't, don't know how to change it. And they're like, what's the code? <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to know so we can help people. <laughs> and I gave them the code. They're like, and their response, they didn't even respond to that directly. They just said, oh, well, you'll have to send us the safe and give us a copy of the purchase receipt for the safe, and then we'll change the code for you. So no acknowledgement whatsoever that, hey, maybe this... This thing actually yeah. does exist. We, we were kidding. JK. You didn't find the master code. <laughs> yeah. There is no master code. Thank, does that, does that answer? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank right you. On. Thank you. And one more we question. got only a few minutes. We're going to try to hustle through yep. whoever's left of the mic. There you go. Please. Yo. Uh, Cheers. I've seen a bunch of documentary movies about like life in prison. I know there's a bunch of fly-on-the-wall TV shows about jail right now. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever seen, do you know of any instances of a key profile being revealed in footage of those? Mm. Mm. Uh, I can't say any uh, of those like fly-on-the-wall documentary-style ones. I have heard uh, of at least a few instances where people have escaped from prison by getting a good look at the uh, keys hanging off a guard's belt and Actually, then there was a prison that put the master key to the prison on the book. Yes, the yes, that was a very recent it, one. And somebody just <laughs> someone literally put out. the profile <laughs> of the master key on the on the inmate prisoner handbook. on the inmate orientation guide <laughs> on the cover of the orientation guide for the inmates. But but really, um, we've seen some of the the Folger Adams locks, and those keys are, are huge. Yes, like, you're uh, not going to hide one of those are, anywhere intentionally. Detention locks are really That's kind of an odd That's a lot of, of toilet paper, paper mache. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's not any place you would think about hiding in from inspection. It ain't going to go there. But there, there are actually a number of prisons, and this used to be a thing in the Victorian period, uh, where they have adopted either special wallets or covers on the guard's belt to hold the keys, or keys with an integral cover that folds over it. What, when what's important to keep in mind is that, um, remember with any, with any lock system, it is a system of components and it's not just the lock cylinder. So oftentimes in prisons, when inmates do escape uh, through manipulation of the lock mechanism, they're actually not picking the lock, but rather um, interacting with or preventing some other mechanism that locks the door. Um, oftentimes uh, the doors are so poorly maintained um, that they're able to figure out other creative ways of, of jimmying doors open that don't necessarily have anything to do with picking the actual lock itself, more like bypassing it. So I think we have just a couple minutes left, so I think we have at least we one two more people. question. We can get them. All we right. can serve All these right. two people. Um, maybe, maybe someone else should go. This is not, nothing to do with locks, but it has to do with inaccuracy. In, sure. In. Okay, okay. We'll, I'm a we'll musician. Okay. I'm a saxophone player, and I was, I'm actually was on a show of... of uh, Gotham on Fox. Okay. Yeah. There was a scene with a band playing in a nightclub. And okay. I forget the star's name, but she was singing. And they come in, I go, they say, they want the people that play the same instrument so it looks more realistic. That's the idea. So I come in there. I did it once before in Saxon, it was fine. This time they come in and they play the track. It's a trumpet. <laughs> I'm holding it. And, and, and they supply all this. And I said, that's not a sax, that's a trumpet. And they, um, they got a trumpet, but the trumpet, and this is something, maybe not everybody knows this, because it's another minutiae thing for people in that field, had a Harman mute in it. It's a metallic mute, has a very different, like, like those Miles sure. Davis yeah. records and that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that can be both surprising and not surprising right. at the same time. Like, to you, it was like, come on, yeah. you guys are idiots. So I, I, they did not have a mute, so I had an open trumpet, and they got that Harman mute sound, <laughs> so people that understand this would, would think that's hilarious. And I was featured quite a bit okay. playing obligato to the singer who was a star. I don't remember her name. And it's like All right. That's great. Well, grab a drink. If just gentlemen morning. behind you can ask a question in 10 seconds or less, can you do it, sir? Oh, wow. You, well, you just jumped in front of the poor guy. He's been standing up all day. No, I was waiting. Up to you. All right. 10 seconds. You got it. Go. I have worked in production on TV, um, yeah. been a consultant for something like this. And similar to that, sometimes you know what you have to do, but you know that they have no interest in reality. So my recipe involved a balaclava, three laptops, blue LEDs, and fingerless gloves. 
so. There you go. Just if to make ladies, sure. Sometimes. If you leave your fingerprints everywhere, you thank you. Really if they won't listen to you, make them look ridiculous. Uh, if you have more questions, I think... How fast you can you talk? How fast Go. can you talk? In jurisdictions where uh, burglary tools already. are felonious, like, oh, maybe yeah. here, uh, have right. you guys come across any stealth kits in art, concept art, media, things that maybe you've come across as actual viable products that aren't immediately apparent as... Like, Pick tools objects? are not actually illegal in virtually any state in the union, including the four states of Mississippi, Virginia, Ohio, and Nevada, where you think they're illegal, but they're not. Tennessee's the only state of concern. No, we're not aware of any covert tools, except tools that you might have improvised, to look like they're not tools. Ask us downstairs in the village about that. Take your whiskey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to the panel.